Hello and welcome to Lockdown Knockout Live. I'm Karen Bashir and finally we're going to bring you live coverage of semi-final number one in the Recurve tournament. History's already been made in this competition with the first 12-pointer hit uh, in, in the quarterfinals on the men's side of the draw and a new maximum of 32 has been reached. We're going to start our double header today, both semi-finals coming to you live today, but we're going to start with the women's side of the draw. But before we meet the athletes, uh, let's meet my guest for today. He's been by my side since the very beginning. And if you like, he's, he's like my agent. He marks my scorecard and he collects my arrows. It is the wonderful World Archery's Chris Wells. Afternoon, Chris. Um, okay, we had a delay. We had some technical issues yesterday. Uh, what's what's happened? How have we fixed it? 
Well, all credit to Aida and Gabby for being super, super flexible. There were some uh, problems with the connection in, in, in Mexico yesterday. A storm knocked out some, some of the cell towers, but we've rescheduled today. Best decision because we weren't going to be able to bring uh, kind of a proper program yesterday. And, and while we've accepted there's some issues with connections during the life of this tournament, if we can't show the sport, it's not worth doing. So happy to be back today. Happy to be back with strong connections and happy to see a good match between two great archers. Fingers crossed. <laughs> um, look, we've got four athletes uh, left in the tournament. Steve Vaya, Crispin Duenas, Gabby Bayardo, and Aida Raman are the final four. Uh, who do you see going through? Well, they're the final four because they all shot fantastically in their quarterfinal matches. Uh, Steve, fantastic against Brady. Crispin, that perfect, perfect on tens match um, against Bernardo. Uh, Gabby was bold, went for went for the twelve, didn't get it, but but won a shoot off. And Aida looked really, really good in her match against uh, uh, Yasmin as well. Um, Fantastic work from all of them. Any of them could win. And, and this 12-point target, you know, it really could throw a spanner into the works if we, uh, if we get, some, get some bold shooting going on. Yeah, well, you talk about the 12-pointer. It, it, it's, uh, I mean, I love it personally, uh, but there's quite a lot of buzz going around about it. Yeah, and actually, when we asked Kruger, the, the company in Germany, to print them, uh, they said the minimum print run was 1,000 targets and we only needed 100. So we've got 900 left over, which we've been able to make available on the, on the shop. Um, so if you do want one, they're a little bit more expensive than normal targets, unfortunately. But I've also also provided the white dot on uh, on Facebook as well if you want to download it and make your own instead. Oh, the great thing to have. And I, I think uh, if you want to buy one, it's only uh, three Swiss francs. So it's not really that expensive. Uh, well, Chris, I think it's about time uh, we met our athletes for the first semi-final. Uh, first up, it's the Netherlands 2019 European Games bronze medalist. She shot a 577 in qualification and beat Casey Calfold of the USA in her quarterfinal. It is Gabby Bayardo. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Gabby. Uh, look, we had a, a delay yesterday. Thank you for being so accommodating and uh, shooting for us today. Uh, I see you've moved from where you were yesterday to a new place. Where are you? Yeah, so I'm um, back at the outdoor garden. Uh, yesterday I was planning to shoot in Papendal where Steve Weiler is shooting. Um, I got um, notified that I need to be there. Um, I went there yesterday and um, yeah, we had yesterday some issues. Aida had some issues with, with her Wi Fi and stuff. And well, today I'm back at, at, at our place. And are, are, you, are you ready? I mean, it's been a little bit of a while since you shot your quarter final. Have you been working on anything in particular? Well, I've been shooting, I've been training in 80 meters. Um, I'm trying to shoot the 12 again. <laughs> um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but um, I think I'm ready. And uh, you mentioned Steve shooting uh, at the, the range where you were, were yesterday. Uh, there's a good chance that we could have two Dutch archers in the final. So yeah, yesterday he was uh, in the training center. We, went we were talking about it and we were kind of like, where are we gonna, sh if we need to shoot together, where are we gonna shoot here or at our place? And then we were kind of like, yeah, it would be nice to shoot here at our, uh, in the garden so we could uh, make like a barbecue at the end. But yeah, let's see what happens. Well, uh, look, we're gonna let you go and get ready, uh, but uh, we've also got a little quick look about uh, where you are today and where you're shooting. Let's take a look at your tour. So this is our garden, this is the place where I'll be shooting at today. Um, we have some cherry trees in that side. We have some wind today, we have some... Yeah, it's kind of sunny. Um, what else do we have? In this side we have Cheeto and Mikey, my bow. Well, there we go. A great look behind the scenes of where Gabby is shooting. But it takes two to tango. Let's meet uh, Gabby's opponent. Uh, she's Mexico's 2012 Olympic silver medalist. She shot a 579 in qualification and went on to beat Yasmin Anagos to qualify for the semifinals. It is Ida Roman. <laughs>
Good morning, Ida. Hello. Um, listen, we had some technical difficulties yesterday. Obviously not your fault at all. Uh, but ha has it uh, disturbed your game or are you ready for today? Yeah, I'm ready for today. I think it was kind of a good challenge and try to fix the things as fast as I could. So now I'm in another city. <laughs> And it looks absolutely fabulous there. Um, listen, you didn't utilize the 12 ring or the 12 scoring point target uh, in your previous match. If you need to, are you going to use it today? Of course. Why not? <laughs> Everything to <laughs> try to do my best. And uh, I understand you've got some support there. A very special day for your supporter as well. Yeah, I think. I'm kind of lucky to get all the support and also I want to thank Gabby and want to thank you to hold and all the fans and all the people around that they were waiting for this match and thank you so much for the wait. Uh, listen, it's no problem at all. Thank you so much for sorting out. Good luck for the, the match today against Gabby, uh, but we'll let you go and get ready. And uh, whilst we do that, let's have a look at the draw so far. As you can see, we're down to the semi-finals. Double-headed today, as I've said. Uh, Ida against Gabby to start things off. And a little bit later on, we'll have Crispin versus Steve Viler. Now, the rules for the competition, if you haven't been watching, uh, we're shooting at 18 meters. It's a set system in recurve archery, three arrows per archer. If you win a set, you score two set points. If it's a draw, you get one. And the target score for the win and a place in the final is six points. The targets themselves, well, they can be lined up uh, vertically like this or in a triangle formation, which is actually the only one I think we've seen throughout this whole recurve tournament. The target itself is about the size of a watermelon and it's formed of concentric circles. The center is just four centimeters wide and will give you 10 points. And there's the special white dot that will give you 12 points if you hit it. But the archers have to tell us if they're going to go for it. Hey, Gabby, you said there was a bit of wind there. What, what are conditions like at the moment? So it was pretty funny because yesterday I needed to go there and it was like outside was really sunny and it was really good weather. And today we have like some, yeah, we have different circumstances. But um, yeah, I'm just going to need to aim somewhere else. And Aida, uh, since we've seen you set up, we've seen the sun come down a bit. I mean, it's obviously very early in the morning there. Is it, is it heating up? Yeah, well, I think the city is not as warm as the city that I was, so it's kind of cold, <laughs> I'm kind of freezing, <laughs> but it's fine. <laughs> Look, Ida, you shot a, uh, a higher scoring qualification, a 5.79, just two points ahead of Gabby. But it does mean that you get to choose whether to shoot first or second. Which one is it going to be? I would like to shoot first. Following the pattern that we've seen throughout the tournament, Ida will shoot first. She's in Mexico. The athletes are ready and so are we. So let's get on with the match. It's time for set one of the semifinals. So live from Mexico, it is Ida Roman to get the semi-final underway. That well, looks like it's on the 9-10 line, so we'll score a 10 if it's in. And a nine from Gabby in the Netherlands to start. Just having a little adjustment of her sight there as well. Now, did the bark of the dog distract Ida there? She's gone right and into the nine ring. And a solid 10 from Gabby. The adjustment has worked. Oh, 
Longer hold, but a 10, so a 29 for Ida. And that's gone into the nine ring, so that is a 28 for Gabby. Uh, Chris, uh, the first arrow from Ida uh, looks like it's touching the line to me on that right-hand target, uh, the bottom left ring. What do you think? Yeah, it's difficult to see from this angle. It's on the bottom of the ring, and, and you're looking from the bottom as well. Uh, but I think, it's, I think it's clipped. I think she'll get that uh, upgraded to a 10. Obviously, the arrow just has to touch the black line to be upgraded and get the, the higher point. I'm a big fan of these, uh, these lockdown knockout targets with their stronger black ring for the 10. It makes it much easier to see, in my opinion. Yeah, it certainly does. Well, it looks like uh, Ida's down at the target. Let's uh, see what Ida's score is. Yeah, is 10, 10, 9. So confirmation of a 29 for Ida and Gabby, I see you're down there as well. What's your score? <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see it, the paper is kind of, uh, wait. There we go, we've uh, got it, I got 28. A 10, 9, 9. Uh -huh. yep. A 10, 9, 9. So a 28 <laughs> for Gabby. So that means Ida takes the first set and leads by two set points to zero. Chris, the, uh, as the athletes return to the shooting line, that dog barking on the second arrow for Ida, that must have put her off, right? Well, it put me off a little bit, but uh, <laughs> Ida, when, when, you, when you're in your zone, when you're in your routine, when you're in your groove, uh, noises don't tend to distract. And, and let's be honest, these archers have to put up with much bigger noise when they're, when they're in the finals arena at a, a normal event. But one of my favorite things about this tournament is actually a lot of those noises are gone. And, we're hearing the birds and the trees. Gabby, I know you've got a lot of a lot of nature sounds around you. I really like that. Yeah, yeah um, I was actually... Cool. Uh, um, right. Go on, Gabby. Uh, sorry. Um, yeah, I was actually checking the comments from the uh, previous match that I shot. And um, it's really funny that people, like, to be honest, I was not um, focusing on that on that day. But people was like, oh, I can hear the beards, um, yeah, like singing. And, oh, I can hear that this is happening. And, yeah, I was, yeah, I was not focusing on that. So I didn't notice it in that moment. It's really funny that pe other people notice it. Now, Aida, did that dog to scratch you at all or was it okay? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah, but it's, it's okay. Yeah, it's, that is my problem. So it's like, I need to focus better. <laughs> Well, you took the first set, so uh, you're leading by two set points to one. Gabby will shoot first in the next set. It's time for set number two of this semi-final. <laughs> Solid start into the 10 ring. Matched by Ida. So all square, 20 points apiece. Yeah. Gabby taking a little bit of time to get herself ready for that one. Shoots a nine, so a 29. Ida can take this set with a 10. And it is a 10 and a 30 for Ida. Uh, by my reckoning, that is another set for the Mexican archer. Chris, are you agreeing with me? Yeah, absolutely correct. We saw Gabby take a little bit of time on that last arrow. 
She might have been waiting for the wind to pass a little bit, but I reckon there was that thing going through her mind. Should I go for the 12 and, and yeah. put a bit of pressure on Aida as well? Yeah, I think she was thinking that as well. Uh, it'd be interesting uh, to find out whether that was the case. Uh, but we're down at Ida's target. Ida, can you confirm a 30? Yes, 10, 10, 10. 10, 10, 10. A perfect 30 for Ida. And Gabby? I got a 10, 10, 9. A 10, 10, 9 for Gabby. So it is four set points to zero for Ida in Mexico. Uh, Chris, uh, a strong start from Ida. Yeah, fantastic shooting. Uh, well, we saw her practice a little bit and, and we saw her sort of improve throughout practice and she's really tightened up in this match as well. It's, it's you know, archery is a repetition sport. You've got to get in the groove before you go. Warm up is, is really important. And, and actually both of these girls went through a kind of similar routine, kind of loosened their joints up, loosened their, their muscles, shot some arrows, and it really all comes together in, in anger. It certainly does. Gabby, uh, whilst you prepare for the next set, can I just ask you that that last arrow you shot, you took quite a bit of time to get yourself ready. Was it the wind or were you thinking about the 12? Uh, yeah, uh, it was the wind, but um, I didn't want it to wait a lot. So I kind of just shot my arrow and um, maybe it was not the right moment, but yeah. Okay, well, you are trailing uh, by four set points to zero. So you're going to shoot first in the third set. Let's get to it. Well, that one looks like it may have just crept out into the nine there. And that one on the line, so I think it will be a 10. And that's a 10. So applying a little bit of pressure to a Mexican opponent. Now that's in the nine. So the question is, will Gabby go straight for the 10 ring or is she going to go for the 12? Now she didn't call it. So she was going for the middle of the target. And I think that is an eight. A long hold, but a 10, and I think that's a 29 for Ida, and I think she's done this in nine arrows. Uh, we will wait to get a confirmation of the scores as the archers go down to their targets to uh, retrieve their arrows. Uh, let's go to Gabby first. Gabby, have you got your scores? Yeah, yeah, wait, wait, wait. Uh... No, <laughs> so <laughs> I quite ready. A, I'm sorry. Like, I'm, I'm no, 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 I wasn't target, but I wasn't ready with the um, with the results. I shot a 1098, a 27, a 27. And Ida, can you tell us what your score is, please? It's 10, 9, 10. And it is a 29 for Ida Roman, which means she takes the third set and wins the match six points to zero. Ida, congratulations. Uh, if you could possibly get Thank yourself you. in shot or turn your camera so that we can see you. Here I am. There you are. Congratulations to you. So after the technical problems Thank yesterday, you. I can see the massive smile <laughs> on your face. Uh, how do you feel about making it through to the final yeah. of this competition? Oh, I feel so happy. And 
Thank you, Gaby, to give me the chance again. <laughs> and all the people that were helping me around, I feel super nice and all, all charming. And I don't know, I'm excited and super happy to get this match. Gracias, Gaby. Well, well, congratulations to you. We will see you in the final, which is coming up on Sunday. Uh, and hopefully we'll have a, a brilliant connection like we've had today. But uh, let's go and speak to uh, Gabby Bayardo. Gabby, you had some distractions, not just uh, uh, today, but also yesterday with the, the competition moving. Did, do you think it affected your shooting at all? Um, no, I kind of think that it was more about the, the, yeah, the wind and yeah, when I was start shooting, there was a lot of wind and then, uh, through the match was, well, through the three ends, <laughs> it was like, uh, coming and going back. So I think it was just like the circumstances. Like, I think that, um, yeah, it was just not, uh, the day to shoot outside. Well, listen, uh, commiserations for not making it through, but congratulations for providing us with some absolutely fabulous entertainment. It's been an absolute pleasure to not only see you shoot, but get to know you a little bit better. No, thank you, guys. Thank you for inviting me. And, um, yeah, I hope that we get the chance to to work together again and um, shoot more competitions and um, some real competitions, some uh, competitions with everyone where everyone is... Um, uh, in the shooting field and some uh yeah with some some other people you know it's kind of cool that i was invited to this competition so thank you so much absolute pleasure it was brilliant to watch you uh chris what a superb match we had there and ida not distracted at all from the technical difficulty she faced yesterday no, Ida was very impressive in that match. Uh, Gabby shot very, very well as uh, two, especially considering the wind conditions. Just that last hour in the eight, she needed a 10 to really force an extension to that match. And it just didn't go off at the right time. She wasn't in the middle. You could see when she let go, she wasn't happy with it. Uh, and that was the end. Ida in three sets. It's the first three set match we've had in this competition. Yeah, brilliant shooting from uh, both of them to get through to the semi-finals. But in the end today, it was Ida's day. Uh, let's take a look at uh, the brackets, the draw uh, as it looks now. Ida Roman coming through the right-hand side, the women's side of the draw, and she is in to the final. And we're going to find out who she faces a little bit later on today. Uh, oh, there we go. Uh, in about uh, one and a half hours, we'll have our second semi-final between Steve Vier and Crispin Duenas to see who will face Ida. Roman, who is already through to Sunday's final. Uh, Gabby, anything you could have done differently today? Uh. Um, maybe shooting side. I think that it was just the circumstances. I, I, to be honest, I was really feeling, I was feeling, yeah, I was feeling really prepared. Um, but I think that it was just not, uh, not the day to shoot outside. Like I said. And, and Aida, you're obviously uh, in a different city today, shooting uh, uh, somewhere completely different from where we saw you shoot your first match. Uh, where will you be shooting the final? Uh, I don't know exactly, so <laughs> it's going to be a... I don't know, I, I think I'm going to shoot here or some other place. I don't know exactly, I need to plan it. Because, you know, it's, it's, it's happy that people can borrow me a little place, but also it's like... <laughs> It's not my place, you know. Um, I'll figure out. Yeah, well, we are going to see you again on Sunday, Ida. Thank you very much. Congratulations for making it through to the final. Gabby, uh, my heart goes out to you. you. You've worked really hard to get to this stage. We had the delay yesterday. And as you say, the conditions where you were weren't absolutely perfect for uh, winning this tournament. But it's been a pleasure having you here. And Chris, my agent wonderful as always to have you uh it not only the the sound of your voice but the wonderful picture that you bring to the world of archery uh and thank you to all of you as well for watching that is semi-final number one it is a double header today do come back in around about 90 minutes time for the men's semi-final but until then bye for now bye